in this slideshow, I'm going to introduce you to my all-time favorite fish, Gambusia holbrooki, and their place as an invasive species in Australia. This is in connection with a paper that I'm currently writing and is only a brief summary of the situation. So let's get started. What are they? These fish are a, in the family Poecilia in the genus Gambusia. There are tons of species in this genus. This is one of the two most common ones and one of the two that lives in North America. Uh, Gambusia holbrookii and Gambusia affinis. Affinis is much larger and has some small differences, but on average, the way they tell them apart is the size. Um, they are the two Gambusia that are native to the U.S. They are one of the most common live bears in the world, including guppies, platies, and other Gambusia. So, that if that gives you an idea, um, there's although they're native to the U.S. because they're the way that they are, they are invasive all over the world, and especially in Australia. So their situation in Australia is, you know, they're invasive and they were introduced as mosquito control to reduce malaria rates. Uh, they impact the wildlife in negative ways, being able to outcompete them, out like to eat more consistently, and they take up the resources and they just reproduce so heavily that it like outcompetes everything. But they're still used as mosquito control around the world, which is probably not great. So why are they so successful? They're successful because they're extraordinarily hardy. They can survive extreme heat. They can survive low oxygen. They have tons of genetic variability because of multiple paternity. So they have multiple fathers and the those multiple fathers give sets of genetics to that female and that female can use what like whatever comes in and so you end up with all these different lines that have all this variance which makes them able to rapidly adapt to new environments which makes them very capable of dealing with climate change and alongside of that they're also very very aggressive they're able to like nip fins and completely tear apart other fish leading to like infections and overall ending up killing a lot of native fish so why is that an issue that's a natural thing that happens with fish it's an issue because they're an invasive species and as an invasive species they're killing off the native fish and it's been shown that their removal can greatly increase the populations of these native fish so like in the case of the southern iberian barbel it's led to their like restoration of their historical population sizes in where they used to live they're coming back in full force and are coming back to where they once were as a population which was not scarce and in places where there are red fin blue eyes shown like over here in the corner they are out competing them extraordinarily and causing them to go extinct in certain areas and these fish are already critically endangered so it's not it's not like they're doing well and on top of all of that, they're not even as effective at catching mosquitoes as a lot of their native counterparts are. And so this is just not a good situation. And they're used still. And the people who use them, they use them in Australian waterways for mosquito control first. And then when World War II came along, the Allies were sitting in Australia to like be over there and they kept getting malaria and so they were like hey we've got to stop getting malaria and so they introduced and established these fish into the waterways and that's really when they took hold and started to take over and even today they're still used as one as mosquito control all around the world 
Although in Australia, it's not as common because people are starting to realize that it's an issue that they're in the waterways. And how people in Australia are controlling them is they've taken actions like using dumping chemicals into waterways which can cause the deaths of fish including native fish so take that as you will and they've drained bodies of water because there are lots of artificially built bodies of water that they've taken over which can be somewhat effective but can also kill off some native fish that have taken up residence there They've used uh, shocking them with like shock nets to lift them out of the water, but that has a high risk of accidentally catching native fish and harming them. The current method that is the most effective method overall is to catch them with a net or trap and just remove them from the, from the environment that they are in. What a lot of Australian individuals do to stop them is to just catch them and throw them on the bank. And although that's not particularly humane, it is helping. And you got to do what you can. And I think that that's, it's not okay to treat them in such an inhumane way but it is necessary to remove them in some way, shape, or form in the end of it. And if you want to read more on them, I have my resources listed here. These are some pretty interesting articles to read. Um, they take a little bit of parsing out because they're scientific papers and can be a little bit confusing. Um, the, I have more that will be in my paper and I would like to reiterate that none of the image that are none of the images that are in here are mine. All of these go to the papers that I list here and to government resources online. So I would like to thank you for listening to me talk about my favorite fish and bye.